Now last week, as a quick summary, we talked about, a lot about how we are to, Jesus said, do as, when he was talking about the Pharisees, Sadducees, he said, they sit in Moses' seat, so do what they say, but don't do what they do, because they say and do not. And we talked about, we don't want Jesus to have to say that about us. So it's very important that we do what we have learned to do. That, as we talked about earlier, we come to the knowledge of the truth, stand on it, and then go up from there. And uh, we talked about how men love titles, especially religious people. We talked about, uh, as an example, the, the scripture talks about humbling yourself. You know, people say, oh, Lord, humble me. The Bible says humble yourself under that mighty hand of God and he will exalt you. He didn't say he'd do it for you. He said, you humble yourself. One of the ways you can do that is choose not to use titles. In, in the religious realm, that's the way to do it. We talked about how we were ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. And an ambassador, we, we talked about they were actually the representative of that government in that land, which is what we are. We're in, we're in the enemy's territory because he stole it from Adam. And we're God's representative as if Christ did beseech you by us. Be reconciled to God. We have, every one of us, a ministry of reconciliation. And that's, what, that's the life that we're to live. And I didn't want to do the whole message over again here. And we read about how, you know, that when people count the cost, they'll send an embassy of peace. We are to count the cost and be the embassy that goes out for the Lord in this world and goes to battle. Now, what we want to get to from there is this. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. Who is the Father? He's the great I am. He's the one that sent Moses way back when. And he has sent us. And yet, one of the big things, one of the statistics in this country anyway, is that most Christians only lead one person to the Lord in their entire Christian life. Now that doesn't sound like you're obeying what you've been sent to do because you're not impacting the world. And we're all called to be ministers of reconciliation. And the enemy gives people lots of excuses. And yet, I am has sent us. Jesus has sent us. He said, go ye into all the world, make disciples. He said, preach the gospel, preach the word. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and tell them the kingdom of God has come. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that's what we're to do. But, you know, the, the enemy tries to hinder that. He gives people lots of reasons not to do that. Whether it's, well, I don't have to do anything because I'm paying a professional minister to, to do it all. You know, they'll, they'll hold the meetings. All I have to do is invite some people. If they show up, great. If they don't show up, great. Whatever, I'm paying him, so whatever he does, I, I get a little credit for. I mean, and we have been trained that way if we've been in churchianity. It's, it's almost a hard thing to break that type of thinking because it is so ingrained. Not only if you've been in churchianity, it's just ingrained in the religious culture. When people talk about religion, it's all predicated on stuff like this. So I want to go back now into the Old Testament, and I want to look at the call of Moses. Because he said, he, he said a prophet like unto me is the Lord going to raise up to you. And that's what Jesus was. So this is, this is, this is something we can learn what it means that I am has sent you. Because every one of us can stand up and say to the world, I am has sent me. I am the Lord that healeth thee has sent me. I am the Lord the provider 
has sent me. I am the man of war. He has sent me. I am in all the names of God that are there. He is that. And we are in him and he has sent us. He has sent us what? To be ambassadors of Christ. The, the, the Christ, the anointed one, the holy one of God lives on the inside of us and wants to reach the world. I mean, we're fulfilling his mission. He came, he died, he went into the ground and died. But if a grain of wheat goes into the ground, or a grain of corn comes into the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. If it grows, it brings lots of plants and lots of fruit. And that's what we're to do. So let's go to Exodus 3.1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. So here is Moses, somewhere around 80 years old, and he has been cast out of, out of Egypt because he tried to, he tried to be the deliverer of, of Israel on his own. And he got scared of the king, he ran out, he spent 40 years in the desert, and now it says, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, and Moses looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, but it wasn't consumed. And Moses said, I'm gonna turn aside and see this great sight, why this bush isn't consumed. I mean, imagine that, you're out on a desert, and you know, used to being alone with your sheep. And there you look up and you see this fire, this bush on fire, but you can see that the bush isn't burning, but the fire is all around it. He said, I gotta go check this out. And that was like, that was a beacon call. God was calling him. And uh, the, when the Lord saw that Moses turned aside to see, God called to him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses said, I'm here. And the Lord said, don't draw hither. Put off your shoes from off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. And this is what God said. He said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people that are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by reason of the taskmasters. I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land into a good land, a large one that flows with milk and honey. Now notice what the Lord said here. I am come to deliver them. He said, I am come to deliver them. This is, what, this is what people today go to churches and get on their face and pray for. Come, Lord. Let's have a revival. Come, Lord. And the Lord said right here to Moses, he appears in this burning bush, and he said, I am come, and I am come to deliver my people. Now therefore, behold the cry, verse 9, of the children of Israel is come to me, and I have seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt. So he says up here, I am come to deliver my people. That's great. You are God. You've come in your mighty power. I know that you can do anything. You, you couldn't say this quite yet, but you parted the Red Sea. You can do anything. And then what does the Lord say? I'm going to send you. I am come, and I'm sending you. How did God come to the children of Israel? through his servant Moses, through the messenger that he sent. How does Jesus come to mankind today? Through us. People say, Lord, come, Lord. And yet the Lord has come. And he's come as a flame of fire. And he sent us to be his messenger. That's just what happened with Moses. Here's Moses, back 40 years ago, he wanted to deliver 
the children of Israel out of the hand. When brothers argued, he tried to fix it up. He slew an Egyptian that oppressed an Israelite, and he had to get out of Egypt because of it, for fear of Pharaoh. Now God comes and he says, Moses, it's time. I am come. The great I am, the God of your father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm come to set the, I've heard their oppression, and I'm going to set them free. Now here's how I'm going to do it, Moses. I'm sending you. Now let's look at Moses' reaction to this. It says in verse 11, And Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? Remember, he had, the last time he saw Pharaoh, Pharaoh would have taken his life because he was a criminal in Pharaoh's eyes, a traitor to Egypt. So the first thing Moses says when God puts this great call upon him, he says, who am I? That I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. So the, and this is the reaction that you see among Christians. God has come. The Holy Ghost has come. Christ in us, the hope of glory has come with, he says, with the fullness of the Godhead lives in us. And he says, now go. And as you go, and we all the things we read about in Mark 16, heal the sick, dead, cleanse the lepers, open the eyes of the blind, proclaim the kingdom of God, all of that. And what do people do? Same thing Moses did. <laughs> Who am I? I've not been trained in theology. Maybe I need to sit and, and, and get more trained. Maybe I need to sit. There's something missing here. So I need to get more knowledge. I need, to, I need to sit in meetings for the next 10 years and maybe something will happen. Maybe I'll go. The only thing you're going to do is go to the same chair every week because that's how religion trains you. That's, God said to Moses, he said, certainly. Okay, Moses says, who am I that I can deliver all these people out of, I mean, Egypt is one of the great powers of the earth. Pharaoh, pyramids, slaves, all the stuff, they, the, the treasure cities, all the things that are in Egypt. This is a huge city. Moses said, you want me to go down there and deliver these slaves out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord says, certainly I will be with thee. Now, the Lord really, and you'll see it here in a minute as we go, the Lord really expected that was enough. All he really needed to know is, I will be with thee. What did Jesus say to us? I will be with thee unto the ends of the world. He will never leave you or forsake you. You abide in me, I abide in you. And the Father, the great I am, certainly I will be with thee. Moses, you're not going alone. You're going because I sent you. You're going in my might. So it is up and, and there shall be, a, and this will be a token to thee that I have sent thee. And so he gave him a couple of tokens, just like he did for us. These signs shall follow them that believe. Jesus healed all that were oppressed of the devil. And he, he said after he rose up, he said, now you guys go, and these signs will follow them that believe. These will be a token unto you, that I am with you, even unto the ends of the world. Exodus 3.13. So you thought, well, okay, this is, you know, this should be case settled, yes? And Moses said to God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel, and they're gonna, and I say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What am I gonna say? See, he's looking, he's these questions come up, and the, he's looking for maybe a way around this a little bit. What am I going to say to him? And the Lord said to Moses, tell him, I am that I am. And he said, thus thou shalt say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. The great eternal God who, who 
who was and is and is to come. He's the great I am. He's the God that created everything. He's the eternal I am. He said, that's who's with you, Moses. Verse 20, and I, God said, will stretch out my hand and I will smite Egypt with all my wonders that I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. Now again, the Lord said, I am going to come down. The Lord said, I am going to smite Egypt with my wonders. But how did he do it? He didn't just go down and start smiting. He didn't just go down and start turning the waters to blood and having all these judgments rain down. What did he do? He sent Moses. That's why I need you, Moses. That's why I need you to go. You're my hands. You're my voice. You're my ambassador. I am has sent me to you. To you is what he told him. Just like we say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I come to you. If you ask me how we're doing this, it's not by our own power or holiness. It's by the name of Jesus through faith in that name. That's how you see God move. You don't see God move. You don't, we're not spectators. We are participants. We are the vessels that God moves through. Verse 10. And Moses said to the Lord, Oh my Lord, I'm not eloquent. Say another reason not to go. I'm going to tell you, the enemy will give, and you see it all the time, he gives people reasons not to go, not to witness, not to sp spread the gospel. And we, we've, we've seen that. We know people have sat years hearing the gospel and don't spread it and don't think they have to spread it. He said, I'm sending you. When you send an ambassador... What do you expect? Said he'll just go over there, have a nice house, sit in his house, you know, eat the fruits of the land, live the high life. No, you expect him to go there and represent you and do the work of your kingdom in that land. And Moses said, Well, Lord, I'm not eloquent. I'm not a good speaker. Again, this is how people are. They find excuses, they look at themselves, and they say, I can't. But this isn't us. The Lord already told him, Moses, you already tried it by yourself. Didn't work. You got run out. He said, this is going to be different this time. I am has sent thee. I am with thee. I am, I'm giving you these wonders to show in the land of Egypt. And that's just how it is now. We don't need anything that we don't have. God has given us. We don't need to be eloquent. We don't need to not be eloquent. What we need to do is be willing to open our mouth and speak the word. The word will do the work because I am is with us. And he sent us. Lord, I, I'm not eloquent. Neither heretofore nor since you have spoken to thy servant. I'm slow of speech, and I'm of a slow tongue. Lord, I, I just can't do this. Now, isn't it interesting, too, that what Moses is really backpedaling on here is standing up and speaking out publicly. And we know by statistics that one of the greatest fears people have is the fear of speaking in public. It is, it is on the list of things people are afraid of, it's right toward the top. And Moses is saying, I can't do this, I'll make a fool of myself. Well, Moses, die. It's not about you. Just do what you're told and God will make it work. And the Lord said, okay, who made man's mouth? Or who makes the dumb to, or deaf or the seeing or the blind? Didn't I make everybody, saith the Lord? Now go and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you will say. See, there's no excuse. This is back in the Old Testament. 
under a covenant not as good as ours, with a God who's speaking out of a burning bush. Our God speaks to us out of the burning fire that lives within us now, the Holy Ghost and fire. And we have a power to spread this gospel. And God said, Mo he said, Moses, I made the mouth. I'll teach you what to say. What does the New Testament say? Jesus said, you don't even need to think about it when they drag you before kings. I will teach you what to say. We have the Holy Ghost. He will teach us what to say. And Moses said, who am I that I should go to, I'm sorry, Moses in 4.13, he said, Lord, send I pray thee by the hand of whom you will send. Which means find somebody else, would you? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Isn't Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And behold, he cometh forth to meet thee, and when he sees thee, he will be glad in his heart. And you will speak to him, put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth, and will teach you what you shall do. So, you know, the Lord works with what he has. And so he sends Moses. So he, he even went, even though he said, I made your mouth, Moses. I am with thee, Moses. He said, all right, I'll give you a spokesman. Your brother Aaron, you'll be to him like God. He'll be to Pharaoh like God. Now, the interesting thing here is what God didn't say to Moses. God didn't say, well, Moses, hey, don't worry. We got this covered. As soon as we're done here at the burning bush, I want you to go back to Jethro. He's got a class that he's going to hold to teach you public speaking and teach you the things you need to say to Pharaoh and teach you how to do it in a powerful way. He didn't say that. And he didn't say the same thing to Aaron. He didn't, he didn't set him up a class. He said, I will teach thee what to say. How? By the word, by the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Spirit. And he will be your spokesman to the people, and he shall be, even he shall be to, for thee instead of a mouth, and you shall be to him instead of God. God didn't put Aaron or Moses through a long training class. And you see, this is what people think they need today. They think they need a training class. They think they need somebody to sit and, and teach them everything to do. And you know what? We should be trained. He sets the five-fold industry in to train the saints. But that's no excuse not to go. Why? Because you go with what you know. You go, you start where you are. And as you go, it'll be glory to glory. As you go, you'll get better. As you go, you'll learn the things that you might want to work on. That you'll learn the things that you might need to study. You'll learn the things that you might feel like it'd be better if I knew this as I went. But not, none of those, none of that is an excuse not to go. He didn't, he said, it's as you go. He said, go, Moses. He said, I'll be with you. I'll be with your mouth. I'll give you words to say. As you go, this will all fall into place. It's the same for us. If you, when you got saved, if you had a, a total change, if you were actually born again, we're not talking about a decision for the Lord. We're talking about being born again by the supernatural spirit of God. The inner man is changed. And when that happens, you want to tell everybody. It's supernaturally natural. Because you just fell in love. You just fell in love with Jesus. You just realized what he's done for you. And you realize how much everybody around you needs the same thing. And you don't, most people just start talking. Hey, Fred, you know, we, you know, your best friend, you tell them what happened. Your parents, you tell them what happened. In my case, I went back to, to the high school I'd attend and I told all my teachers what had happened. You just want to let people know because now the love of God is constraining you and you want to reach out. And you don't worry about what to say because the, oh, the name of Jesus, if you say that to somebody, this dark world, it's like shining light on them. 
And if you tell them how the Lord saved you, if they will, if they will touch the Lord like you did, they'll be saved too. That's all you need. Now, are you going to grow? Sure, you're going to grow. Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man, but it doesn't mean that you don't go from the minute you get saved. You don't wait around. You don't need anything else. You don't need a course. You don't need to sit anywhere and be trained. You'd go. And as you go, here's what you do. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. Freely you've been, freely you receive, freely give. Moses, go. And so, verse seven, chapter 7, verse 1, And the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made thee a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother will be your prophet. And you will speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak to Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of the land. And Moses was fourscore years, 80 years old, and Aaron was 83 years old when they spake unto Pharaoh. So, being too old wasn't an excuse either. Oh, I'm too old to do this. Ah. You know, Moses was 80, Aaron was 83. You know, the, 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 if you're 80, then you're just right where Moses was, ready to start your, start your ministry in this world of proclaiming the gospel. And Moses did it for 40 years. But they had to believe who they were in God. They had to set aside all the excuses. And God showed them he was greater than any of this. I am has sent you. Go in this your power. Then this your strength. I am with thee. When God says to us, I am with thee, really... If he's God, why doesn't that end every question? Why doesn't that end every excuse? What, if God is with you, what else do you need? Say, so, well, I'd like to learn more about this and that. Well, fine. But don't let it be an excuse not to go. You go. You talk. You do the light you have. And as you go, God will give you more. Because we are to teach everything that he commanded us. We are to teach people to go back to the word. We are to be built up in the word. But not, but the going comes first. But the God is with us comes first. But the compassion to help people comes first. Now there's another man I'd like you to look at for a minute. His name is Gideon. And in the book of Judges, Midian had taken over the land and were oppressing the children of God again. And the children were crying out to the Lord, and the Lord heard it. And he found this guy who was, who was trying to thresh some wheat and hiding so the Midianites wouldn't see him. And he said unto him, he said unto him, O mighty man of valor, that's what he called Gideon. Here he is hiding from the enemy, and he says, O mighty man of valor. And he said, I'm going to be, I'm going to use you to deliver Israel. And what does Gideon say? Does he say, great Lord, let's go. In uh, 615 he says, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? The Lord already said he'd be with him. But look what Gideon says, my family's poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. So Moses had his set of excuses, now Gideon has his. Um, Lord, how can I go? I mean, I'm like, our family's not important, and I'm the least in my family's house. I don't have the finances, the prestige, the status to go. And the Lord said to him, does this sound familiar? Surely I will be with thee, and you will smite the Midianites as one man. Same thing he said to Moses, I will be with thee. 
saying he says to Gideon, I will be with thee. And that should have ended all the argument. I mean, look at, look at the Lord and Moses. The Lord was, it says he was angry with Moses because he kept making excuses and the Lord kept saying, Moses said, I can't talk very well. I'll be with your mouth. I'm going to send you. I'll be with you. This is the Lord. And it's the same, the great I am that's in the Christ is in us. And he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. It's the same thing. I have sent you go. We'll work out the details as we go, but I am with you. And if I am with you, do you realize the Holy Ghost that lives in us has been there for every single miracle anywhere in the earth that has ever been done? And he's in us. I mean, what is it you need to know? You got the mind of Christ. You got the Holy Ghost in you. You draw from an incredible resource, the resource of God himself. And it came to pass, okay, and the Lord said to Gideon, I will be with you, and you will smite the Midianites as one man. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to Gideon, take your father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that your father has, and cut down the grove that's by it. So the first thing he says, okay, Gideon, let's go. And the first thing I want you to do is clean up your house. Throw down the altar of Baal, clean up the grove, let's get rid of all this stuff, and then we're going to deliver Israel by your hand. And we know he had to cut it down from the thousands of Israel down to 300 men because God wanted to get the glory. It was gonna, and they said the sword of the Lord and Gideon. The Lord will be with the one man, with the Lord, is an unstoppable force. They used to, the military used to run ads about the army of one. You and God, me and God, we are an army of one. And when we join together, it's, a, it's a, an army of overcomers. And he won the victory. And, and defeated the enemy within the land just as Moses and Aaron did in the land because why? God was with them. I mean, Moses at one point, he said, Lord, if you don't go with us, I don't want to go. When they, were, when they were traveling and the children were mumbling. And he said, Lord, if you don't go with us, I don't want to go. He had learned what this meant when God said, I am with thee. And yet today in the New Covenant, it's even pow more powerful than that. God was with Moses, but he was, in that, he was outside. He was in that burning bush. He walked with him, pillar of fire. He walked with him, pillar of a cloud. He was with him, but he's in us. We are one spirit with the Lord. Christ in us, the hope of glory. You are one spirit with the Lord. Incredible supernatural, new creation, a species that's never been around before. And God is with us, the same God that told people all of this back under not as good a covenant, but you know what? God was there and so it got done. Let's look at one more person. This, this man's name is Jeremiah. And it says in Jeremiah chapter 1, the Lord speaks to Jeremiah when he's calling him. And he says, Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. And I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. And I said, Jeremiah's writing here, and I said, uh, Lord, behold, I cannot speak. I'm a child. So, one guy said he was too old, one said he was too poor, and this guy, he says, well, I'm just a child. I'm too young. So, I mean, the whole range of excuses is covered here, and the answer was the same to every one of them. And the Lord said to me, don't say I'm a child. For you will go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, 
you will speak. He said, don't say that. Be not afraid of their faces, verse 8, for I am with thee. And to deliver thee, saith the Lord. So what did he, same thing he said to Moses, same thing he said to Gideon. He said, I am with thee. So don't worry about being a child. You don't need, <coughs> you don't need to grow up before you go. You don't need to grow up before you prophesy. Why? Because I am with thee and I'm the ancient of days and I have all power and authority and wisdom and I am with you. And he says the same thing to us. So any excuse that we would make would be just as invalid as all the ones we've just read about because he is with us. Amen. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Verse 17, Thou therefore gird up your loins, rise, speak to them all that I command thee. Don't be dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. I'm with thee. Don't worry what they think. Don't worry the expression on their face. Don't worry their threatenings. I am with thee and I am the greater one. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is with us than he that is with our adversaries. For behold, I've made you a defense city, an iron pillar, and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes, against the priests, against the people of the land, and they shall fight against you. Lord, this is, the Lord is just telling Jeremiah what's going to happen. They will fight against you, Jeremiah, but they will not prevail against you. For I am with you, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. I am with thee. I am with thee. Don't fear their faces. They will not prevail. Why? I am with you. Tell them I am has sent you. Tell them Jesus, the Son of the living God, the Christ, has sent you. And he lives in you. And he said, go. And as you go, do all of these things. And folks, that is for us, that is for our children, that is for our disciples, that is for our friends, that is for anybody who will listen. And as soon as they meet the Lord, they can go. They have everything they need. Will they be, will they be better as they, later? Go, sure they will. But you go right away because why? He is with us. We're not going in human strength. We're not going in human wisdom. We're not going in our own limitations. We're going in his unlimitations. We're going in greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. All things are possible if we believe. We're going into the God of all possibility. We're going into the prevailer, the one who was the first overcomer and we're to walk in his steps and why? Because he is with us. Hallelujah. I am has sent us. So let's go do I am stuff.